Happy Friday. How are you? You too. Congratulations. Um, oh, thank you. Let me turn my volume up a little bit more. Um, I love the show, and um, there's some. First of all, I love that Nick was a fan of your dad to begin with. I think that's was amazing, and I love that he got to meet him in the last episode. That was kind of a fantastic conclusion, I think, to that. That was just an added, I think, bonus to the whole show. Um, it's a, it's such a fun show, and it, it's it's so different than any other competition because you can feel the camaraderie and and you guys really like each other and you're helping each other throughout the show. How did you find out about the show and how did you get involved? Um, great question. I first, um, honestly, it was my sister. I have two older sisters and my middle sister. We were all at home um, last summer and in our in our childhood home in Lake Tahoe and my sister was watching the show and I kept hearing Nick and Amy I'm like what are you are you watching Parks and Rec and, and I come in and I'm like wait what is this and she's like oh Adam you love this show mm -hmm. and we got we fell in love with it and I was like this looks like fun this looks like so much fun and my sister Abby was like you should do it and I was like what what do you mean I should do it she's like i she, I think she goes, I think you would be great on this show, Adam. And I was like, oh, thanks, Abby. Okay. <laughs> and so this is my other sister, Anna. She's driving me to the airport. Hi. Hello. We got to watch it. We got to watch it with big sister. Her kids are Luke and Lauren from the episode seven. Um, but anywho, oh. Abby told me to apply and I just Googled like casting call and sent in an audition tape and that's it. I love... um. I love everything you do from the get go from your the first episode. I thought it was so touching the family portrait you did and so creative and amazing. Um, you did a portrait of you, your father and your grandfather. And then you made the eyebrows and mustaches move. And I thought that was so smart and so emotive too. It was just it was just so heartwarming to watch. That I think Thank the show just goes beyond just like making crafts because there is that whole element. It just it's a heartwarming show. It's very different than anything on, I think, on the air right now at all. How oh. how how was working there and how was working um and having Nick and Amy kind of not your mentors, but as your guides throughout the show. They were so also feel free to uh Tell me if my audio cuts out and I'll turn off my video to save bandwidth. Um, oh, yeah. Feel free to cut me off. But Nick and Amy were so thoughtful, um, exactly who I'd hoped they would be. Amy had this extremely inquisitive, extremely gentle, like motherly nature where she just would approach your desk and go, Hi, Adam, what are you working on? How are you? Like, tell us, tell us what's going on. And and then Nick would listen and nod. And at the end, you know, after he's um, kind of been um, just, you know, arms crossed, listening intently, he'll say something extremely thoughtful and encouraging. And I, they just were so fun to have on the show, very grounding. They were so grounding and so encouraging. And I loved their visits. So. They kept it, they kept it uh, grounded. That's it. They're very grounding. I really um, enjoyed kind of, I think in one of the episodes you said, and that you're not, you, you're not the type of person that goes to a craft store. You kind of see what's around you. And um, they, I think they call you MacGyver many times <laughs> during the show. Yeah. And I, I love that aspect of it. Have you always, have you always felt like that? And have you like kind of gravitated toward that way of designing things? I think so. Um, that's a great question. I think, you know, I always loved making when I didn't realize I was making because it was problem solving. So whether I'm camping or skiing or just like, you know, on a rainy day, I always just like to make stuff with what was around me, the resourcefulness of it. And I often found that when I'd go to a craft store, I would get stressed out because I'd be overwhelmed <laughs> with like options and materials. And then there's this like 
cricket cutter and i'm like i want that i don't know what it is i want that and then you're like wait what am i doing what are <laughs> it's like this everything is beckoning to you and i kind of get that paralysis of you know decision fatigue and yeah. of course you know the craft store is great for a few select items you need um but i always just love the objects around me and everywhere I go I always have a pocket knife and a little bit of thin paracord and a few zip ties and you know that's all you need most days I love that you just said cricket because I feel like I've gotten an anxiety from that mission like oh I want that but like what do I even make with it I have no (laughs) idea what it even makes I have no idea still what it makes something with I think I'm not sure exactly what was um one of your favorite um crafts on the show that you you got to make or one of the your favorite challenges um i loved making things out of those water skis because oh, i've looked at them my entire life they're they're in everyone's garage they're in everyone's boathouse and they kind of just collect dust and to find them on set and to go what can I do with this? And at first I made that hammock chair. I, I, I had four skis and I cut it in, I cut, the, I cut the longest one into thirds and that became the supports for the hammock chair. And I was like, wait, I still have three more skis. What can I do? And I'm like, maybe I could, I think I could make a table. So that was kind of unplanned. Um, I, just, I was just hoping to make a chair. And then I was like, well, I can still do more. And then I made that table, which I really like. And rad. then there were still extra scraps. And and with the scraps were... Oh, wait, the audio did cut out for a second. The, the final... Oh, I'll turn my video off. I cut my video off. Is this a little better? Yes, I think... Yeah, the audio we got now. <laughs> Let me know if this is better. Okay. Yeah, I could hear better, yeah. Great. It was fine up until that, like, one second. Okay. Um, well, I've got two bars, so I'll jump back on. I've got one bar. We'll see. So two bars. <laughs> no, we're up, four, we're up three bars. Um, oh. But uh, the final, the final few scraps, what was left of that ski, I turned into a cribbage board because I love cribbage, and I think that was my favorite object from the show, um, which I got to take home too. Oh, that's right. I love that you made a cribbage board. My brother enjoys cribbage as well. I have no idea still how to play cribbage. My, my brother also loves cribbage. Um, what, what was uh, something that you, did you like learn anything about yourself in this whole experience on the show or something that like surprised you? Um, I, that's such a good question. What's, um, I think I was surprised. I think it was just trust your gut. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still, I could hear you good. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, because you're, you're on the clock and there are so many directions you can take and it, the best thing you could do was go with the first idea you had Um, because we often have ideas that are just sitting in the back of our head waiting to come out and you're given a prompt and you think of this idea and like oh that's it execute execute and when you find yourself doubting yourself that's when you know you'd kind of start spinning your wheels and so that was my that was my you know my morning mantra uh, before every challenge was like stick to your guns, trust your gut, and just, like, you know what you want to make. Like, make what you want to make. If there were no judges, if there was nobody in this room, and you were just kicking it on a Saturday morning, what would you make? And and that that um, is what I tried to maintain. I mean, I think that's just great advice in general, because I think so often we don't go with our first instinct, and we start second guessing, and things become complicated, whatever you're working on. And if you just kind of stick to that, your first instinct and kind of trust it. And this is very good advice. <laughs> um, so coming now, you are the winner of, exactly. of the show. Um, 
coming off of the show, what, what do you hope to kind of gain, you know, from this experience? Um, does it kind of, kind of alter like kind of where you are in your career or things that you, you want to do in life? Um, such a good question. I would, uh, my, my, one of my final, on that last episode, there was a conversation I had with Amy and she said, she goes, Adam, we're, we're really going to miss you. And she said, every, every time we stop by your station, your desk, you always put down everything and we just talk and you share and you teach us whether you're making dumplings or you're making lamps or you're crocheting, you've taught us everything. You've taught us how to make everything you're doing on the show. And she goes, you love, you love to teach, don't you? And I, I had never even thought about that. Um, I was like, wait, I think, I, Amy, I think I do. I think, I think you're right. I think you're onto something. And um, I also love, uh, I loved being in that environment. And so what it, what it looks like, what the future looks like is, is unclear, but I think the values of, oh, I love teaching, I love sharing. How can I incorporate more of that into the day-to-day? Because that just was so lovely and energizing. So hopefully, hopefully I can just share more, more craft, more making, more mythology, meth- methodology. I love we'll that. Goes. I love that. That's what she imparted you because I think that'd be great whether it's like a book or it's something like online on YouTube or something I I could completely see you doing like sharing your knowledge with other people um instantly so I think that's it's a very good idea and I think it's something that you just naturally seeing you on the show would lend lend yourself to just I would I would watch it or read a book (laughs) whatever (laughs) medium it may be I would definitely watch it I like that you said crochet too because I'm in the middle I was watching the last episode and I'm crocheting a blanket. It's taking me forever, by the way. I didn't oh realize gosh. blankets take so long crocheting, but they take forever. Wait, will you hold it up? I'm trying yeah. my sister. Look at her crocheted blanket. <laughs> this is what I was doing while I was watching the last episode. She, she was, yeah, she made it on the last episode. Watching the yeah. last episode. Oh, really? Yeah, sorry, I have your part so though. I didn't realize that crocheting <laughs> takes so long. Yeah, you gotta get a giant hook. <laughs> That's what I now like. Now this next time, I'm like, I need a bigger yarn and a bigger hook because this is like too tedious. It's like too exactly. long. But I'm gonna exactly. It. It's but I feel very tired watching you. I'm like, well, if you could do a whole shed and make that, I surely can make a blanket. <laughs> yeah, you can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Where did the idea for? I mean, I love the last episode and the shed that you made and all the elements. How did that all come together? And how long did you have to make that? Um, I don't remember how long it took. Um, the idea, my, my first thought, I love photography. And I was like, I want to make a camera obscura. And oh, that's amazing. it's this giant pinhole camera because I want to like make it this exploratorium. Like, here's how a camera works. Um, but they're like, I was like, wait, I don't know how to get the cameras in here. It's going to be dark. It's not going to work. <laughs> Okay, I love that idea though. So I was like, okay, that's a little too uh, sci-fi. Um, I like, love well, that what though. else do I love? Thank you. Uh, I was like, I just want to, I my favorite colors, I love primary colors and I hadn't gotten to really use primary colors the whole show. And I'm like, I know I, I want it to be primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. I want it to feel really airy, really relaxing. There's these beautiful trees around the barn, and I want to I want to bring those in. So I cut out those holes so you could only see the sky and the trees. Yeah. So it kind of felt like a treehouse. Um, and I think it I, I don't know. I, it, it was just sort of it felt like this final mixtape of like everything I wanted to do that didn't that I didn't get to execute in the other crafts, like a giant bookshelf and a big couch. And I wanted to like, you know, make some, some more kites. Episode two, the lending library. Yes. I wanted to make kites, but I didn't have time. And so I still had all this ripstop. And so that's why I started crocheting those hanging um, ripstop hoops. Because those were reminiscent. Like it was just the desire to, to like finish what I started in a way. So it kind of just, I don't know, one thing led to the next, but 
It was fun. It was fun to I, make. I loved it. I loved it. I loved the finished product. And you were, I'm getting kind of the, I have to wrap up because I know you have other people have to talk to, but you were a delight to watch and uh, your creativity was very inspiring. And you're just your personality and your your good naturedness just came through immediately. And I hope you do like do some, you know, teach or do something, uh, you know, out, you know, to the public because I, I would I would enjoy watching it. And it just it was I'm glad you won. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. That means a lot. Oh, my pleasure. It's been a joy talking to you and your sister. <laughs> of course. She said just goodbye. Great to meet you, Jennifer. Oh, Hannah, right? <laughs> yep. Good memory. Thank you. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. Good luck with your quilt. Thank you. <laughs>